Greetings, this is J.R. Dickey. Thanks for tuning in to our podcast. And by the way, don't forget our website, graceandtruth.net. I hope you're having a great day, but if not, hang with me. It's about to get better. Okay, today we're going to talk about something that's been on my mind for quite a while. You know, the world's just nutty as it is around us. Who exactly are the godly? Well, that's what we're talking about today. Let's get started. After resigning his pastorate to go lead another church, a pastor was approached by an endearing older member of the congregation. She wept over the pastor's decision to leave and said, things will never be the same. Oh, the pastor tried to console her by saying, oh, don't worry, I'm confident you will get a new pastor who is better than me. She continued to sob and replied, that's what the last three pastors have said, but they just keep getting worse. <laughs> well, maybe you've heard that story before. It's a bit humorous, but it presents a theme. People today just don't understand humility. They don't get it. It's scary because contemporary, let's say worldly thought, portrays it in an extremely negative way. You see, humility is not just an act or a posture. It's a whole mindset, a whole way of thinking about God, about yourself. Well, look at the guy next to you. Do you consider him better than yourself? <laughs> of course, you might think, uh, you don't know who I'm looking at. But the Bible says in Philippians 2, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Now with this perspective, you are at peace with God and heaven is delightful. That is, your expectation now and enjoyment later. That's because humility is based in selflessness. Likewise, pride is not just an act or posture, but an opposite mindset. And all of humanity walks in this manner, very naturally. Thus, when you seek a definition of the word humble in the dictionary, you'll see uh, having a feeling of insignificance, inferiority, subservience, etc., or low in rank, importance, status, quality, etc. And so, as people think of humility via the filter of sin, they don't see it as God does. They see it only as a downer, literally. But the Bible tells us that God lifts up the humble. That's in Psalms 147, verse 6. To dwell with him in the high and holy place, Isaiah 57, 15. There he beautifies them with salvation and revives their spirit, Psalms 149, 4. So, in heaven, the truly humble are highly exalted and actually live in the Almighty's presence. Now, here on earth, contrary to what the dictionary says, it's not really positional. Moses, who led millions and spoke face to face with God, was, quote, very humble, more than all the men who are on the face of the earth. That's Numbers 12, verse 3. In Matthew 18, it says, when Jesus called the disciples to pursue greatness through the humility of serving others, he wasn't merely calling them to be countercultural. He was calling them to be counter-natural, or better, to be supernatural. Now, none of us is born with this character equality. If Jesus' humility ethic seems alien, it's because it is. 
It is the ethic of a foreign kingdom. There you go, Matthew 18.1. A better country, Hebrews 11.16. And that whole quote was from John Bloom. Thanks, John. At that time, it says in Matthew 18, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Still, what's so great about humility? Why does God esteem it as a high quality of human greatness? Well, possibly because humility is the only condition of the soul that enables us to perceive and value truth and glory for what they really are. Only the humble can truly view the heavenly. Yes, humility leads us into the mindset to be able to see and understand, which is why God leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way, Psalms 25, 9, and only the humble can be pure in heart. Therefore, only the humble can see God. Check out Matthew 5, 8. Uh, John Bloom adds this. Why did Jesus say only the humble can enter the kingdom? Because only the humble can see the kingdom. Why are the greatest in the kingdom the servants? Because the more humble we are, the more reality we truly see, the more of God's multifaceted glory we truly see. And therefore, the more joy we experience, and therefore, the more we want others to experience that joy. What makes humility so great is that it's God-like. Okay. Let's go on beyond the theoretical and get a handle on this. What does real humility look like? If we're having a difficulty perceiving real humility, what do we do? First, look to Jesus. He embodied and demonstrated for us the humility of God. Read the Gospels and take notes. Second, and even more important, Invite the Spirit of Christ into your heart, your life. Accept His gift of life, and you'll begin to appreciate and perceive God in a whole new way. You see, ever since the Garden of Eden, we've been duped into believing that God is fundamentally mean and withholding, that He is severe in character, Unfortunately, many Christians mistakenly still see him as such, and it hinders their ability or desire to enjoy a truly loving relationship with him. C.S. Lewis said, According to Christian teachers, the essential vice, the utmost evil, is pride. Unchastity, anger, greed, drunkenness, and all that are mere flea bites in comparison. It was through pride that the devil became the devil. Pride leads to every other vice. It is the complete anti-God state of mind. It is pride which has been the chief cause of misery in every nation and every family since the world began. John Chrysostom, one of the early church fathers or early church writer, wrote, Humility is the root, mother, nurse, foundation, and bond of all virtue. How do we gain the mind of Christ and humble ourselves? To put on the mind of Christ, we will need to make a firm decision to ponder, understand, and adopt Jesus' way of thinking. His values and attitudes must become ours. His strong emphasis on humility and meekness and his example of it must take hold of our thinking, our desires, and our conduct. We must admire his humility and truly want it for ourselves. For this to happen, we need to earnestly and regularly pray 
for the Holy Spirit to change our hearts. For it is impossible to do it in our own strength. We will also need to understand what Jesus meant when he called men and women to humble themselves. We discover that from the Greek word Jesus and the apostles used, it's tapienos, I hope I said that right, which conveys the idea of having a right view of ourselves before God and others. If pride is an exalted sense of who we are, in relation to God and others, humility is having a realistic sense of who we are before God and others. We must not think too highly or too lowly of ourselves. Rather, we must be honest and realistic about who and what we are. Now, God is just and holy, but don't confuse that with severity and meanness. As we witnessed in Christ... God himself is humble and loving. Some may point to Old Testament stories of war as examples of God's harshness, but they always leave out two important facts. First, those actions were taken after literally hundreds of years of violence and rebellion against God. And second, we only have the observation of our own time and space. We cannot know what is happening in eternity. No, it is all too easy for our sin nature lens to attribute Satan's own attributes of pride and hate mistakenly to our loving, humble, almighty God. We just don't see correctly, and consequently we don't understand the beauty of and heavenly nature of humility. Only Jesus Christ, by his Spirit, can fix that in our hearts. It's not the famous or the gifted that are necessarily the godly. Most often, it is the humble who are actually the godly. Here's some scriptures to think about. 1 Corinthians 15, 9, where Paul wrote, I am the least of the apostles. In Ephesians 3.8, he says, I am the very least of all the saints. And 1 Timothy 1.15, I am the foremost of sinners. Now, Paul recorded these statements toward the end of his life. You know, humility is a strange thing. The minute you think you've got it, you've lost it. Without humility, we keep all our defects. Hmm. And they are only crusted over by pride, which conceals them from others, and often from ourselves. Developing the identity, attitude, and conduct of a humble servant does not happen overnight. It is rather like peeling an onion. You cut away one layer only to find another beneath it. But it does happen. As we forsake pride and seek to humble ourselves by daily, deliberate choices in dependence on the Holy Spirit. Humility grows in our souls. Francis Fenelon said it well. Humility is not a grace that can be acquired in a few months. It's the work of a lifetime. Now may the Lord grant you peace in the midst of any storm and faith to trust Him. Look for our next podcast. And may you realize more of His grace today.